Hi everyone, welcome to episode 36 of Off The Sprue. In this one I'll be looking at painting multicam camo pattern in 135 scale. I recently built this little vignette on a uh, actual jalapeno cheese spread wrapper and uh, it's a soldier eating his MREs. Now this was really just uh, an excuse to practice painting multicam camo pattern. The original multicam pattern is licensed to a company called Cry Precision. The multicam pattern has become one of the most recognizable uh, camouflage patterns out there and it's been adopted widely by uh, militaries across the world as well as law enforcement agencies. The current multicam pattern was uh, adopted by the US military to replace the uh, notorious grey UCP pattern, universal camo pattern, which of course turned out not to be as universal as first claimed. Multicam was first worn by uh, US Special Operations troops uh, in the Middle East and of course they can purchase their own equipment and uh, Big Army soon picked up on the effectiveness of this pattern and it was then rolled out as operational camo pattern to uh, select units and of course later, I think around 2015, uh, the pattern was uh, adopted by the, uh, the entire US Army and uh, Air Force. There are two variants of this pattern, the first licensed by Cry Precision and then a second variant uh, licensed by the uh, US government called Scorpion W2. There are very subtle differences between the two patterns, uh, mainly in uh, the colors as well as the uh, direction of the, uh, the smaller branches, if you can call it that, the, uh, the dark and the light. And on the uh, current issue Scorpion pattern, these run in a horizontal direction only, as you can see on screen. So, how do you paint this in scale? Well, I started with this figure. It's a modified Bundeswehr figure from uh, NATO in miniatures. And what I did is I added some uh, cargo pockets and some, uh, some shoulder pockets to his combat shirt. And uh, I also applied the same camo pattern to this uh, large field pack from Legend Productions. Of course, there's also a uh, ballistic vest and uh, you'll see that later on in the video. The first step, as always, is to apply a surface primer. This is my go-to primer from Vallejo, the matte black. And uh, this is uh, applied directly to the airbrush and uh, then uh, sprayed onto the, uh, the resin uh, figure in an even coat. This is actually a very important step because it prepares the surface to take acrylic paint but the uh, the black color will also serve as uh, pre-shading later on and I'll show you in the next step how that works. This is the result, the figure is primed and it's now ready to uh, take a base color. These are the colors that I use, the base color of course being a German camouflage beige, World War II, the two greens uh, are Middlestone and US Dark Green. The brown colors are German Camo Pale Brown and Tan Earth, a dark and a light variant of brown. And then finally for the spots, Pale Sand and Chocolate Brown. So that's the, that's the colors. Let me show you how I went about uh, applying this to the model. First up, the base color, German Camouflage Beige. This is a World War II color, and uh, this is sprayed from the top down onto the figure. And what this will do is to create uh, natural highlights and shadows uh, on the figure itself. You can see there by the shoulders and uh, also on the, uh, the trouser legs, getting all those wonderful shadows coming through. This is the result. Base color has been applied. And uh, we can now move on to the next step. This is a pair of trousers, obviously. And uh, in addition to being the most comfortable pair of trousers I own, this is also in the, uh, the original licensed multicam pattern from Cry Precision. Now this is a very handy reference there because when viewed up close, I can see that there's a lot of gradients going on in this pattern. In this case, between the, uh, the brown and the tan, and uh, you can also see similar gradients in the greens, green and tan, between the, the two different greens. And uh, this is something that we'll have to recreate first. Now, if I first started with US dark green, and I carefully airbrushed this onto the model, just little green sections 
uh, in a very rough uh, camo pattern. And it's essential to uh, have your airbrush uh, set to draw a pencil line. In this case I'm using an Iwata Eclipse, which is a, a fantastic airbrush for this sort of work. There's the result, the green has been applied, and uh, we can move on to the next color. In this case I'm using German Camo Pale Brown, and uh, I now fill in uh, the brown sections of the pattern, similar as I'm doing on screen. And this will set us up nicely for a uh, for the base colors, the gradient base colors uh, that we see in the actual uh, camo pattern. There's the result. Certainly happy with this. For the next colors, I'm going to uh, use my wet palette and start uh, brush painting. In this case, I'm using Middle Stone. And uh, I now start painting in these uh, fine camo uh, splotches and patterns and I'm using the, uh, the the pair of trousers, the one-to-one the -one scale pattern as a reference. And here you can see the result, the pattern is certainly coming along. This is the middle stone color applied to both the, uh, the field pack and the figure. Next up, Tan Earth, the uh, lighter of the, uh, the three brown uh, colors. In a similar way, now apply the, uh, the tan brown color. Take your time with this, there's no reason to rush this stuff. And uh, make sure you keep a close eye on the actual pattern to guide you while you're doing this. This is the tan color applied, it's certainly starting to look like uh, like multicam, we're just missing the dots, and uh, that will be the uh, the next step. Now, if you're up close, you can see all these little dots: the uh, the dark and the light. The lighter being pale sand. This is the color I'll use for it. And uh, using a uh, 10-0 brush, I now carefully apply all these little dots, and uh, again following the uh, the reference. In this case I'm trying to stick to the current issue Scorpion W2 pattern, so I try to apply these dots in a uh, horizontal running uh, pattern across the figure. This is the result, pale sand is applied, the lighter dots and it's certainly starting to take on the, uh, the distinctive multicam uh, pattern look. This is the result on the, uh, the field pack. The next color is chocolate brown. This of course being the darkest of the, uh, the, the brown colors. And again, the, these dots are applied uh, in a similar fashion as the pale sand. And again, running in a horizontal pattern similar as a Scorpion W2. This is the result. This is the uh, the final result of the painted pattern in 135 scale. I'm very happy with this. Um, when I started this, I wasn't sure whether this will work out, and uh, I must say the, uh, the the airbrush gradients that I applied uh, on on top of the base color certainly made a big difference. If you're curious to see a few more pictures of uh, of this build, uh, it's available on my Instagram, and uh, there's uh, there's a small gallery in there. And you can also follow the process that I followed to uh, build the vest and uh, some of the other accessories. As always, my color chart for uh, for Scorpion or Multicam. Again, guys, this is not the uh, the color guide. There's a lot of very talented uh, figure painters out there, but uh, this, uh, in my case, this certainly worked for me. As always, follow me on Instagram for more builds. Uh, thank you for joining me for this video, and uh, hope to see everyone soon in the next video.